Hey guys, hey guys, welcome back to Drop the Mic. As you come in that door, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And as always, everything that I say over here is alleged. It's in my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only. All right, y'all, let's hop into it. Hey guys, and welcome back to Drop the Mic. Listen, today is going to be kind of like um, a little mini expose, okay? And this is going to be an, I guess, an expose, um, a case study of sorts. And it's going to be talking about Miss Stormy Steele, all right, Canvas Beauty, the people that surround Miss Stormy Steele, and in my opinion, her thirst for fame, okay? And I have a hypothetical question here. Did Stormy Steele's thirst for fame ruin her business? Okay, then also we're going to kind of look at it from a rise and a fall and uh, hopefully um, another rise again perspective. So basically the rise and fall of Stormy Steel <clears throat> on Love and Marriage Huntsville from my perspective. Okay, how she kind of went from the most one of the most loved characters on the show to one of the most hated cast members on Love and Marriage Huntsville in a very short time. Okay, so we're going to start off with like a quick overview of Stormy's story. Okay, so basically Stormy still Stormy still married Courtney Beasley. In or around 2015. Okay. Uh, shortly after that, they bought a beautiful home that is worth or was worth at the time about $275,000. They took a loan out for $270,000. So the home was worth a little under $300,000. OK, and this is all based on the Madison County probate records. OK. All right. You see a pic of the house up on the screen. Um, you see a few pics of the inside of the house. This was a nice looking house. OK. In my opinion. All right. It was it was pretty nice. Um, Listen, uh, I'm going to get a little bit more into the house, a little deeper into this expose, but <clears throat> I want y'all to see this house because I think it's going to give you guys kind of an overview, like as to why I'm coming to the conclusion that I'm coming to in regards to Stormy and the decisions that she made and how those decisions could be affecting her currently. Okay. Okay. So again, y'all see the house, it's on the screen, it's a pretty nice house. To me, it's comparable to other homes on the show, all right, currently. However, Stormy does not stay in that house for very, very long, and you're going to see why, in my opinion. So to continue on with the timeline, Stormy started stormy and courtney started canvas beauty in 2017 all right they got their articles of organization and they started the llc um slash corporation in 2017 all right that particular corporation specializes in hair care products okay and it appears for all intents of purposes that they made a nice little coin, a nice little coin. Now it was floating around that they made over $10 million. Um, 
I don't believe that that was the case. I believe that there was a couple million dollars made, right? Um, and again, this is all in my opinion. None of this is a fact. Um, except for the stuff that I say I got from the Madison County Courthouse. Those are actual facts with documents to back them up and receipts. Okay. As far as the amount of money that, um, her company made, I am speculating and I will give you guys reasons and basis for my speculation as we go through this video. So again, in my opinion, it wasn't 10 million made it may have been between about one and three million dollars made okay in my opinion so <clears throat> they did make a good coin they made a good coin i would say from about 2017 to 2020 okay um again i don't think it was that big 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 it wasn't no 10 million dollars i think that I think that was inflated in order to match an image that Stormy was trying to build. Okay. And we're going to get to that. In any event, in my opinion, <clears throat> Stormy lost her goddamn mind <laughs> making that kind of money. Okay. Over the course of a few short years. And this was with her e-commerce business, right? Her website. She was strictly selling her stuff on her website making a nice coin all right <clears throat> it appears right around i would say probably about 2019 2020 maybe even as early as 2018 stormy set her sights on becoming a love and marriage love and marriage huntsville cast member and to me that was all she wrote. All right. I feel like it has been a downward slide since then. Because when you don't have clean hands and a pure heart. Okay. The universe has a way of showing you you ain't moving correctly. All right. By things just kind of happening the way you're putting it out there. Just, just throwing that out there. So... Now, mind you, I showed you that beautiful house that they built in 2007 or bought in 2000. And, um, what was that? 2017, I believe they purchased that house. Well, 2020, Stormy and Courtney bought their current house and property to the tune of $2 million. Okay. Now, in my opinion, that house was purchased for the optics because her first house again was a very nice and would have been fine for the show okay but because stormy had put up this image that she was this 10 million dollar heir i think that she wanted a house that looked the part of her having that substantial amount of money okay so she and Courtney went and purchased this beautiful home with this beautiful property surrounding it. And it was $2 million. The house was $2 million. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to say it as many times as I can think to say it, that it wasn't a bad purchase. OK, but I believe that it may have been slightly outside of her means and living above her means. I believe that the home she was in at the time was perfect for the amount of money she was really making, not the amount of money she was pretending to make, in my opinion. OK, so again, she wanted to appear like she had more money than she really had. All right. And so she started her campaign efforts to get on the show. Now, this is where to me things get a little murky because there is evidence out here that shows Stormy was 
slash is friends with coleslaw. Okay. I mean, let's keep it real. She came or she was attempting to come on the show through the start of the show, which is Melody Cherie. Okay. However, there is evidence out here that shows that prior to her even developing or attempting to become a friend with Mel, that she was friends with Coleslaw. Okay. So we're going to kind of get to that. We're going to go over all of that because again, to me, this is how Stormy went from, I would say sugar to shit in the fans of, in the eyes of the fan base. <clears throat> excuse me so stormy's first couple of appearances on the show was kind of in the background because mel used her home for her music video her um she used her home to throw her first uh, song release music release party okay so stormy was making herself readily available and the fans were like wow this, she's a good friend stormy is mel's friend right this is what it up here to be however slaw was sitting in the background getting real jealous because she could see that stormy was inching her way towards her dream because we all know that kira okay slaw bed bug bird brain her whole goal in life is that she wanted to be on this show come hell or high water we all know that so anybody that got even close to being on this show she, if she knew some tea about them she would start to sing like a canary because she was jealous right so <clears throat> what ended up happening is stormy makes her debut in the galentine scene with Mel. She came to an event that Kimmy was throwing. All right. It was around Valentine's Day, but they were trying to have a sit down and make all the women get back together and come back on one accord. And she came with Mel as her friend. Well, things went haywire. Okay. At that Valentine's event. Haywire. Um, uh, Dusty Destiny threatened to hit Stormy in the head with a chair. Her and Stormy was up screaming and hollering at each other. Stormy was telling Dusty that she ain't got enough. She ain't got enough. That's what's up. Because, you know, they was getting ready to basically get down to the nitty gritty and fight. Now, in my opinion, the reason why they were getting ready to fight is because Stormy kept asking that Dusty, well, what's going on? Why y'all not speaking? What's going on with y'all relationship? And Dusty was so mad because in her mind, Mel had an ally on the show that she instantly gave Stormy attitude. Okay. And it escalated from there because remember at the time, the entire cast, including Dusty Destiny, their whole goal was to alienate Mel so that they could kind of get her off the show because all of them were doing Martell's bidding at the time, which is they were on a I hate Mel campaign. And then here comes Stormy, who really don't know what's going on. But, you know, she trying to make her way on a show via the star of the show. But at the same time, she trying to make friends. But they sitting back thinking that she's an op because, you know, she they thought she was sticking up for Mel. Come to find out, y'all know that's, that, that's not how it was. Okay. It, it really wasn't. <laughs> So, in any event, she made her way through that scene. That scene became very volatile. All kinds of things were said. It was crazy, right? So, people started kind of looking into Miss Stormy like, well, what's up? What, you know, who is this girl? You know, we want to make sure that she really has our girl Mel's back. Why? Because we know that most people come on the show and then they turn on her. And it, history has proven that this has been the case, that they never really was her friends. She was surrounded by a, like snakes. And all of those snakes were doing her ex, her soon to be ex-husband's bidding. 
right? Okay. <clears throat> so, meanwhile, y'all know Birdbrain was sitting in the background watching all of this unfold and having a fit. <clears throat> having a fit. So, Stormy came on live, all right, and pretended really not to be friends with Slaw. Okay, and Slaw basically threatened Stormy to be quiet or she was going to spill the beans. Okay, y'all take a listen to what um, Stormy had to say. But first, I'm going to read to you what Arion had to say. So basically, Arion said, I will be speaking on the girl who just did a live about me trying to clear her name or whatever. Let's be clear. I was never following you on Instagram. Your personal page and business page follow me and you unfollow me on your personal page after you paid to get on that show. The show you was talking shit about and your so-called friend, LOL. I've been minding my business and I wasn't going to even say anything because I really could care less about this fake ass people paying their way to get on a show. Okay. So basically, <clears throat> Ariane was sending Stormy a message. Okay. To let her know. Stop playing with me before I spill all the beans. I spill some of them, but I'm going to spill all the beans if you keep denying that you basically don't know me. We ain't friends or whatever the case may be. Acting like I followed you on Instagram and all of that stuff. All right. She was already in her feelings about the girl being on the show. OK, so she was going to spill the beans about the nature of her coming on the show, which now you guys. I'm starting to think that that was orchestrated by none other than Hotel Martel Holt as well. Stormy coming on that show <clears throat> and pretending to be Mel's friend. Okay. And they always said money was exchanged, um, given to Carlos, allegedly. But in my opinion, I think that that money that was exchanged was given to none other than Hotel. In my opinion and allegedly. And that's why Bird Brain knew so much about it. Okay. Let's keep on moving. <clears throat> so I will tell y'all this. Listen to what Stormy had to say because she started doing a little pussy popping on a handstand. Okay. Just to let it be known. I, I, you know, she didn't want to totally alienate Ariane because she didn't want her to spill the beans. Because remember, her thirst to be on the show was real Stormy's and Ariane's. But she didn't want, she didn't want their little plan to get messed up. So she started pussy back, back pedaling and pussy popping. Okay. And this is what she had to say. Listen to this friends with Arion. Now I'm trying to even speak on people or things that ain't got shit to do with me. But early on when I first ever went live and was talking about love and marriage Huntsville, somebody asked the question if I knew Arion, I always said, yeah, I know Arion. And let me tell you how I reiterate it. I know Arion because one of her best friends at the time is Courtney's my baby waking up. It's Courtney's best friend. And Courtney's best friend used to work for us. Ariana used to sit outside in the car and wait on him. I know her. You know what I'm saying? Are we friends? No. Never thought <laughs> that could be interpreted as friendship. Um, also, never thought... Say, hey, Chess. He just woke up. Also, never <laughs> interpreted liking a picture in 2020. <laughs> Y'all best friends. And to be honest with you, and if anybody ever say anything different, I'm pulling receipts. Because I got them. One thing about me, the whole time I've ever been thought, even thinking about, I'm going to give you some milk, doing a show, I was like, I don't know these people. I don't know what I'm walking into. I'm going to always make sure um, the, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. The very first day I ever met Mel in person, I told her, I said, yeah, I'm going to be with you. Like, I know her, seen her, 
have said stuff to her. Hey, how you doing? Because like I said, she had a whole friend that worked at our warehouse. She sit outside in the car. Like, come on. And for anybody who don't understand that, I don't give a My life is not but Mary Trustville. I always say I'm so grateful and so thankful that I was um on the show in this season of my life because one thing that I would never allow anybody to do is say a damn something made me when it didn't. Or say someone made me when they didn't. Um, cause that's my truth. That's not my reality. Um, yes, do I appear on a television show? Yeah, for sure. Is that how some people know me of me or a canvas beauty? Sure, yeah. But I also built a very robust cus company and brand off the strength of my own efforts from nothing that I will never let anybody just because they was introduced to me a certain way act like that shit ain't real because that's real for me and that's the truth that's the truth of it so y'all heard that right y'all heard that so she basically was saying that, you know, she she didn't really know her, but she did know her. Her um, Slaw's good friend and Courtney's best friend were um, were uh, close. So she would sit outside Stormy's factory waiting on this friend because that friend worked there and all of that stuff. Listen to me. I think that's a crock of bullshit because remember, this is all during the time when uh, Bird Brain was messing with Martell. Okay. She didn't have no other male friends like that. And I don't believe they was insinuating this was a male and not a female. Okay. And that she was sitting outside waiting on this quote unquote male. I think that story was a crock of shit. I think they had to come up with that really quickly in order to explain their connection without the fan base alienating Stormy. Okay. All right. Because, you know, that kind of doesn't make sense. And honestly, the fans didn't think that shit made sense either. All right. And if you look on the screen, you see a couple of the messages. They was like, girl, we don't we, we don't believe that. OK, so one of the one of the fans said, um, let's see. Yeah, I believe her and Coleslaw were closer than we think. Now, all of a sudden, Courtney and Martell are really close friends. OK. Uh, yeah, uh, again, this, the fans did not believe that scenario. Okay. Um, at all, at all. And again, this is all going to tie into what her mother said too. So let me just be clear that Stormy, as it pertains to Coleslaw Curry, she don't speak on her at all she ain't said another word because she ain't want that ish to blow up in her face okay i actually if you really want to know my opinion i think that she called and smoothed it over with bird brain and possibly could have slid her a couple of coins too okay and that's kind of how that went <laughs> all right so moving right along Stormy still was forming a friendship with Melody, right? She asked her to become a brand ambassador for her Canvas Beauty brand, all right? But this is so funny. She asked her to become a brand ambassador, but then on the other hand, her mom and her, if I'm not mistaken, were making jokes and teasing Mel and her children about their hair, the length of their hair, the... um, um the grain of it you know 4b 4c whatever um yeah i just thought it's funny that she wanted someone who she wasn't that in quote unquote pressed with her hair to be a ambassador for a hair care line but this to me this shows how kind of fake stormy and her mother is and we're gonna wrap 
you know, they call her Betty Kruger, which is short for Freddy Kruger. Um, we're going to wrap Miss Betty Kruger into this shortly. Trust she because she has a lot to do with why the fans do not and probably never will trust Stormy from, you know, like again. OK, so <clears throat> I said it before. Mel used Stormy's house to do her first video and her first song release party. OK, all of this stuff was occurring. So for all intents and purposes and for the optics, it looks like they were building a friendship. OK, so when I tell you that, you know, you had to um, it looks like they were building a friendship. So <sighs> the Melameter started digging because it was something about Stormy that people just did not trust. Okay. So they started to dig up old tweets from Betty Kruger herself. Okay. And I just told y'all that was Storm that Stormy's prune face mama. Okay. Betty was saying some very nasty and unpleasant things about Mel prior to Stormy attempting to be friends with her. So again, to put things in perspective, Betty Kruger, back in 2021, okay? This was before Stormy came on the show, was on Facebook, in the Facebook groups, saying nasty things about Mel. Now, here's my thing with that. If you're saying nasty things about Mel, that would mean that you don't like her as a character, right? I mean, for all intents and purposes, that kind of, that's what that means. Okay. So someone found a message from Betty where Betty was talking about Mel. Okay. And it, it was, it was pretty interesting. Okay. The message said, so Betty Steele, are you saying you haven't liked Mel from day one? And she responded, not from the very first episode. Okay. Shocking, right? Because when it's all said and done, your daughter is forming a friendship with this lady. So why is it that, um, why is it that you are on social media talking about this woman that your daughter is trying to form a friendship with? Don't make sense, right? She called this lady a garden tool. All right. Now, mind you, again, this is a woman that your daughter is actively forming a friendship with. So one of the messages that Betty still put out was, and y'all, this is so interesting. She said, and this was actually August 29th of 2020. So this was even before 2021. Okay. She said, how can you call yourself a power couple when your significant other is, has cheated on you? So people came back in the chat and said, easily, the cheating has nothing to do with having power. So then Freddy Krueger says, but living in a rented home, pretending it's yours did. So the person comes back and says, Betty Steele, why would they not? Many people on TV shows do not live in actual homes. They rent homes so people will not show up at their front door. Here goes Steele. Not the case here. So this lady goes back to her and says, and you know this for a fact? And she says, this post was mostly about calling yourself a power couple. My mistake about adding the cheating. But they still are not a power couple. The power comes from the love and respect two people have for each other. There is no love between these two. They are faking for the camera. 
So <clears throat> another person comes back and says, Betty Steele, that's not what makes a power couple a quote power couple. A power couple makes big money moves together works towards an empire etc and technically mel and martel have done that otherwise this show wouldn't have even been thought of okay so uh prune face comes back and says i know the scots are making money moves who the f was talking about the scots last week martel stated that all the things Mel is doing is costing money but hey it's entertainment I don't have any skin in this game to get in an uproar about these people I'm just making an assessment of the situation so this lady says back to her no one said they all weren't power couples in their own right I'm just explaining to you what that means has nothing to do with the cheating and more so to do with what they got done on paper she responds, she, she, she was pissed at this point, y'all. I don't need an explanation. Now, first of all, y'all, let's put this in context. Why would she bring her dusty, raggedy ass in a Facebook group, okay? Talking about the stars of the show, unless, and this is just my opinion, she was jealous and her gongle face daughter was jealous as well because otherwise these comments comments don't make sense okay you are sitting back all right this is in 2020 this is at the time that your daughter is trying her best to get on the show and now when i really sit and peep game look at the date august 29 2020 Okay, and if you peep game, right around that time is when Courtney and uh, uh, what uh, Courtney and Stormy purchased that house, they purchased it in September 2020. All right, that's when the deed and the mortgage, and here's the proof right here. Okay, so September 2020 is when they pulled that mortgage on that house. So it to me explains why Raisin Face was in this group saying nasty things about the star of the show. Because who do she want to be the star of the show? Who is she trying to cheerlead to come on the show, right? But from the background, her daughter and her daughter's husband, right? <laughs> so what better way to do it than to go on these Facebook groups and start degrading the person whose show it actually belongs to. So again, y'all, I said I was going to lay it out for y'all slowly and methodically and with some receipts. OK, because to me. It explains why the fan base has such a disdain for this woman and her mother okay so let's keep going so now you got stormy plotting to come on the show was friends with the mistress of this girl's husband ex-husband at the time well i don't even know if he was her ex-husband yet you have her prune face mama out here caping for her in Facebook groups, all right, saying nasty things about Mel. Don't even know the woman barely, okay? She actually called her a ho via saying she was nothing but a garden tool. And I'm looking for those receipts too, y'all. Um, around this same time, okay, she was all she was talking about this woman on Facebook incessantly. OK, so to me, that means that her and her daughter were sitting around and talking about this woman. Meanwhile, Mel is just getting to know or has just been probably introduced to Stormy 
and she thinking she forming a genuine friendship okay and her friend um Shanita even said she remembers when she first met Stormy through mail and how Mel rolled the red carpet out for Stormy and was so good to her because Stormy was pregnant at the time and she was like in true male fashion Mel was treating this girl with so much love so much respect catering to her you eat you good how's the baby all of that stuff she was like wow Mel, Mel really likes her Mm-hmm. so that tells you that Mel was genuine the whole time but this girl, Snuffleupagus, was not, and neither was her Ugg Mug Mama. Okay, y'all, we gonna prove that these that these that these people was coming for Mel left and right, honey, it's left and right. Okay, so again, here we got Prune Face saying very nasty, unpleasant things about Mel prior to Stormy attempting to be friends with her. If Two Face was a person. Okay, in my opinion, you cannot tell me that Stormy did not know her mom's feelings about male. Okay, so basically, Stormy just wanted to get on this show by any means necessary. We've established that. So, in 2020, like I just said, Stormy and Courtney were very, very busy. They bought their current property, which I just told y'all. All right, they opened up about oh look i think it's i think the total number is eight i'm gonna go and count but they opened up several new llc's okay several let me name some of them for you she they opened up this is crazy y'all because i was i couldn't believe it so they already had canvas prop they always i already had canvas beauty right llc they opened up Canvas Properties LLC, CAVS Holdings LLC, Laboratory of Dreams LLC, Dream Girl Society LLC, Dream Girl Society, I'm sorry, um, Beast in Business Foundation, <clears throat> Beast and Beards Foundation LLC, Body LLC. Like, how many was that? All of those were opened within 30 days of each other. Let's be clear. Okay. Who opens that many LLCs? Like, at the same time, if you don't have that many businesses going on. Doesn't that strike y'all as odd? I'm going to say that if you look at the time frame, right? This was... April, May 2020. This was during all of this whole Panini stuff. All right, with the C19E. Okay. It's looking like there was some crook stuff going on, allegedly, and in my opinion. And I'm thinking that all those LLCs was opened up in an attempt to get them PPP loans for all for all them businesses. Okay. A money grab. That's all alleged and in my opinion, because there has been nothing done with any of those businesses since their inception. <clears throat> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. All right. I mean, what, what were you intending on doing with eight different seven? But look, I think it was seven or eight different LLCs in a 30 day period. Okay. Inquiring minds would love to know. But we're going to move on from that because that's not what this video is about. So they did get a couple of PPP loans. There was one for Canvas Beauty and one for Body LLC. Okay. All right. Listen, I'm just laying this stuff out here. It really doesn't mean anything because those loans were forgiven. They were absolutely forgiven. Okay. During this time, Canvas was a blowing up okay the orders were coming in they was just flowing but guess what they won't doing they weren't going out <laughs> 
Y'all, the complaints were piling up and the BBB rating was dropping faster than a ride at the goddamn amusement park. Okay. It looked like everything that Stormy cared about was securing. It looked like all that Stormy cared about was securing a spot on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Now, mind you, this is the particular business that have allowed you to purchase a $2 million property. Okay? $2 million. And you're not, like, minding the business that pays you? So what was happening? You would get, she, All these orders were coming in via her website. So the money was coming. But they, but the orders weren't going out. They weren't packed. People weren't receiving their orders. They were so upset. This girl got a double F rating at the Better Business Bureau during this time. Okay. But guess what she was doing with, I, I mean, I'm talking about moving full steam ahead. She was securing her spot on Love and Marriage Huntsville. It's like she had tunnel vision. OK, I'm going to be a star. I'm going to be a star. I'm going to be a star. I have to get on this show by any means necessary. I don't care about my business. Business be damned. OK. And I'll be honest with you during this time. Stormy probably made one of the dumbest business moves that she could have ever made. She signed an agreement to outsource and distribute her products to Target, Walmart, and CVS all at the same time. And that was at half the price that she sold her products for on her website. Because that oil and, you know, those other products that she was selling were all around $29, I would say about $30 to $35. And in Target and, and Walmart, it was $19.99. So there's already a $10, $15 difference right there. Okay. So I, to me, I don't, I'll never understand it. I'll never understand why she scaled up to three national stores at the same time. I'll never understand why she thought that that was a good move to make when she was going to be making less money. Than she was making on her website. Um, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I have a theory. And that theory is. That it was all about clout for Stormy. Stormy wanted to look good. Okay. Stormy wanted to. Again it's about the optics. The same reason why she moved out of a. Very nice affordable house to a million multi-million dollar mansion okay to appear like she's this gazillionaire okay it's it's called clout so you're in target you're in walmart you're in cvs however your customers on your e-commerce side is still not getting their products and they have paid you more money then the people then the distribution deals is paying you at the targets and all that they've paid you more money okay because they're paying more for the product at least 20 to 30 percent more so i don't get it but again stormy was to me she was more she was more concerned about the notoriety that she would get from being in these national stores, not even taking in consideration if that was a good business move. And we all know now that that was the dumbest move that she could have ever made, especially going into all those stores at the same time. All right, but I'm gonna digress from there. She got what she wanted. She secured a spot on love and marriage Huntsville. Okay. She coveted that spot so much. All right. But the problem was by the time she coveted that spot and got that, or she got that spot, 
Stormy was in hot water with the fans. Okay. The fans found her to not be credible. They also felt like she was ghetto. They felt like she was declassing the show. All right. The Melometers have caught her in lie after lie after lie after lie. Okay. She sided with Dusty Destiny <clears throat> after being threatened with the chair upside her head. And the Scots and Martell. Y'all take a look at some of the stuff that Stormy did. Take a look at this little clip and then I'll come back with the rest of my commentary. I, I when, as soon as I got on this show, I, I'm gonna always say it. Like I'm one of the most successful people on the fucking show. And I did it without the show. My truth and I'm sticking to it. And in doing that, you have people who who come on with like all these like all this stuff to say and like when I came on the first thing people wanted to tear me down for my accent which I know how to code switch whatever I never <laughs> knew it was a thing I just knew I grew up always being taught to be one way in this setting and and if I'm relaxed I'm myself I, I get too comfortable my tongue get thick I curse a lot you know and then like even yesterday like my mom was with me I cursed who the fuck you think I learned my language from? <laughs> in my family, in my dynamic, that's not offensive. So I don't care if in other households you all find that offensive. In ours, no one gives a damn. Everybody do it. That's what we do. And if that's a problem, move the fuck along. My mama wasn't offended. Damn, that's what we do. You sit at a family reunion, that's how we talk. It's not offensive in our, in our world. So, and no one's going to change that to appease you because you're watching with a fucking opinion. My mama taught me how to curse. Shit, I'm good at it because of her. <laughs> My cousins, we all do it. What, what the fuck are you doing? I like, what's, like, no one's, that's what we do. If you don't like it, I don't give a fuck. We're not offended. And if we're not offended, you shouldn't be. But I went live yesterday because the shit was funny to me it was funny to me from this perspective when i went on tv and had a moment with destiny stormy still the motherfucking one who's done a, a lot of high level shit in real life is ghetto is this that the third because a real life moment happened that happens with anybody anybody everyone has had a not so pleasant moment with somebody everybody has and so for me to see main cast and people who have been cast members on a show since the conception of the show have a moment that was worse than that hell you can't call me ghetto i still don't think yesterday was the most ghetto shit ever i think it was fucking people human emotions running high in a moment and that's fine y'all have been watching this show as long as it has been out and y'all have seen these people break up and come back together break up and come back together i don't perceive this to be any different and so y'all see what i'm saying stormy first off she was lying about the relationship that she had with the girl we already know that we've discussed that then she came on saying, you know, F this, she don't care about that. If y'all don't like me, then it is what it is. And people was willing to accept that from her. Like, okay, girl, that's that's you. You are who you are. It is what it is, right? But then at the same time, the very soon as she got her spot on the show, the first thing we see, she code switching, pretending like she's some sweet angel and taking us into this healing room with bowls and sounds and sage burning and guess what it's nothing wrong with any of that stuff because i love anything that's healing right but it was complete opposite from the stormy that we saw that said you ain't got enough that's what's up that got on her live cussing and saying that her mama taught her how to cuss right so who are you? So it's like she was switching up because, you know, it was like, oh, the fans don't like this. So let me try to be this person. When in actuality, all the fans really want you to do is be your goddamn self. 
because either people gonna like you or they not gonna like you all right people can say what they wanted to say but if she would have been consistent with being her hood rat self which is clearly what she was guess what she would have had her die hard fans that roll for her no matter what and people wouldn't have thought that she was two-faced or couldn't be trusted or whatever and it didn't help that people started digging up all this stuff on Betty Kruger and the stuff that Betty Kruger was saying. And before we move on, let's not forget that Stormy was encouraging her mother um, as far as the messages and things. <clears throat> All right. So there was somebody said something like, it's amazing how you comment on all of Letitia and Destiny's pictures, but cannot even but cannot even like any of Melody's pictures. Wow, what a friend. And she came back and said, I don't see her liking and commenting on mine, babe. Keep the same energy. And then someone else came back and said, Mel has enough of y'all kissing her ass. And she liked it. She liked that. Now, again, this is a person that was supposed to come on the show as Mel's friend. So, yeah, people, people was not feeling her. OK, because you were supposed to come on as this girl's friend and it didn't take no time for you to, you know, like turn on her. OK, so and that's weird. And then she was also calling herself the queen of the show and stuff like that. And it's like, girl, what are you doing? What are you talking about? OK, so she got her spot on the show. But the person that she tried to show us once she got her full time spot was some fake ass uh zen girl that all i want is peace and harmony and and energy and good spirits and love and and mother earth and that was not who you introduced to this camera okay so people really was like yeah i don't like her she's fake boom so to add insult to injury <laughs> she started hanging out with Sheree and Martel that was again a dumb move on Stormy's part what the fuck are you thinking Stormy <laughs> what are you doing why would you do that I mean you see at the New Year's Eve party Okay, up there, cold chilling. And then she's wondering why Mel basically got her on block or basically she don't have Mel's new number. I don't, actually don't think anybody had Mel's new number, so I'm not going to say that. But why Mel ain't really tripping about reaching out to her like that? Like, she kind of see where they stand. You hanging with the op and his new friend and you came on the show as my friend? What the? What's going on here? So, y'all, <laughs> and her a wrinkle in time face mama continued to dog mail online. This nasty motherfucker was in uh, that No Holds Bar Facebook group talking about a child and a child's hair. She was being she was being so disgusting. OK, and if and if she wasn't talking about it, then she was liking the post. OK, let's be very clear. But she was in agreement with a um, group of adults talking about a child. And the main child that they talked about the most was Sugar Mama. They would say some derogatory things about Tank 2, but they were really talking about Sugar Mama. And I think that that was com the fans were turned off. That was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. OK. And then she came out around that same time, all right, and stated that she didn't, she, she first said, I don't, I don't like Mel because she, I heard from a credible source that she called Stormy Ghetto. Then she goes on to Carlos's show to interview, well, Stormy does, and she was in the background, and this is what she said. Take a listen. I watched Ooh. Sarah Jakes Roberts. I got my message. Yeah, I'll, yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. 
So your mother received a lot of comments after the first episode when she displayed her disdain for Melody and saying that she never liked her. She never liked her spirit. So to clear that up, and mama, you could, I know you want to be on camera, but you could say if you want, if you, you want to scream a child. Okay. Now, knowing, knowing that you are a fan of the show, which I appreciate mama, um, was your spirit about Melody based on what you saw on the show? Or was it when you met her? Did your feelings change about Melody before or after you met her? It started from being on the show. Mm -hmm. And then when I first met her, uh, she came to Stormy House. And before she got here, Stormy and I had had a conversation about chess. And I said, chess was spoiled. And Stormy said, no, it wasn't. So Melody and Stormy had went off to another room and Melody came back in room where I was and she had chess and she said, Miss Baby, you were right. We're gonna have to do something with chess, you know? And I la la la. You don't remember that, do you? It I know. Yeah. It happened. And I'm like, she said, you know, when she said it, I'm like, why is she telling me this? Don't, I don't like anybody to try to side with me when I know you're not meaning what you're saying. Just because I'm storming mother, don't do that. You try to play me stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> Believe shit. Like she really believe it. Like <laughs> I don't see the problem. <laughs> Why did that bother you? Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, the same because she came in and just to be in agreement with me. Working so long with different attitudes. And first now we pick up reads on people. Ooh. I haven't worked in a classroom with kids for 33 years, not knowing each individual personality and personality type. So I just be disagreeing with you just Oh, uh, this what you do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you mad if somebody agree with that? Okay. okay. Well, Miss Betty, thank you for clearing that up. I think I get what you said. <laughs> I love it, Miss Betty. Now, which one is it? Uh Freddy Krueger. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, which one is it? So, I just... <clears throat> so, now you got her mama out here dogging this girl and her children in Facebook groups saying weird stuff about the little girl and the little girl's hair. And I mean, like, what the... What mother does that? Then we find out that she's never liked Mel. Going all the way back to 2020, she was talking shit about her online. I'm sure there's more, but for the purposes of this video, the earliest one I found was 2020. Okay. And then you have Stormy up here not knowing who in the fuck she is. One minute she's a ghetto princess. The next minute she's the daggone Mother Earth. Okay, no one knows like where that came from. It is so the fan base was just sitting back, especially the Melometers, which to me makes up 80% of the fan base for Love and Marriage Huntsville, was just sitting back like, what's really going on? <laughs> so we we in, instead of not knowing what we're gonna do, we just gonna not like you. Okay, Stormy, we just gonna not like you. Cause because we don't trust you. Okay. And, it, and I mean, it goes to show with some of the comments that they was making. So after she did that interview with Carlos, the comments of that interview said, girl, you're nasty. Betty Kruger ass said you didn't like her before you even met her. So stop fucking lying, you funny looking ass witch. She's just grasping at straws now. I hate when people make up a reason not to like someone. Okay. Someone else says, and I think based on this clip, Carlos is just laughing at how silly she sound and was. Another person says, yeah, I believe her and Coleslaw were closer than we think. Now, all of a sudden, Courtney and Martell are, quote, really close friends. All right. Another person says, 
One time it was because she called Stormy Ghetto and didn't want her on the show. Once it was revealed that Mel actually pitched her to the show, they had to come up with something else and they reached, period. So again, people was not trusting what was happening with these people because they, they was lying so much and doing they was doing too much. So at this point, the picture comes out with, with her hanging with Sheree. She goes to the New Year's Eve party. The battle, the battle lines have been clearly drawn. It's a wrap. Okay. She messed up. <laughs> she messed up with the fan base. That's it. That's all. So here we go. 2021 and 2022. Stormy and Canvas Beauty start getting sued left and right. Okay. Her rating at the BBB dropped down to a double F. And that still doesn't stop her from having a massive Black Friday sale with the $50,000 giveaway. Do y'all know there are still people that says that they never got their orders from that Black Friday? And I'm not talking about the one that just passed. I'm talking about last year. Or I believe it was 2020. Yeah, 2022. Like they still have not gotten their orders from that Black Friday sale. And their money was never returned. Their emails don't get answered. And that's why her rating is a double F at the, at the BBB. All right. And honestly, y'all, there has never been any confirmation of anyone winning that $50,000 prize. Because again, we all think that was a hoax and a gimmick. So I think the fans of the show noticed that she was like in a one side competition with Mayo. All right. And people thought that was weird. OK, she even went as far as trying to compete with Mel when it came to her sugar mama line by like stating that she had her kids line first and all of this stuff. And I mean, let me <laughs> I'm telling y'all, this is what made her weird. This is why people was like, who what is this? what's up with this bitch? So she says. One thing about me. I spend years developing products and do major research and testing before I launch. And truth be told, when you're developing a new formulation, it honestly takes that long. That's why I'm so excited about Chess's new launch. If you know my journey to motherhood, then you know how hard I worked to get him here. So I only wanted the best for my baby. It's not about money for me. It's about results. It's about bringing healthy, safe products to the market. Stock formulas or private label products are the only products you can truly launch fast. You should know, Body Glaze. Proprietary and custom formulas take months due to microbe instability testing. The real chemists out there know what I'm talking about. I may have some challenges with shipping and lead times, but out of the 1 million plus people who have, who have tried my products, the vast majority will say they work. P.S. Something I saw today that was mind blowing. Gotta tell y'all about it soon. So everyone saw what that was and it was shade. It was shade because Sugar Mama had just launched her um, Mel had just launched Sugar Mama's line that day. Had just launched it. Okay. So people already knew where the shade was coming from. Okay. And can I ask a really, really like just a, a good question? Have anybody seen anything else about Chess's line since then? And No. <laughs> we haven't heard anything else about that kid's line why because again stormy was being weird and she was being in a silent competition with a person that wasn't thinking about her fucking ass okay you know again this chick is weird and i absolutely uh, let me just let me just keep going so now currently the lawsuits they're piling up interior decoration all right brown skin girl drop that tea 
All right. Actually, brown skin girl dropped the T on mostly all of Stormy's lawsuits. OK, if you go back and look into her video playlist, all of the Apex uh, um, suit. OK, she dropped Zen Gardens. OK, last year, all of that stuff. Go check out brown skin girl. She dropped all of this tea in regards to these lawsuits. OK, for the purposes of Stormy, she dropped the interior decoration tea. Homegirl got the whole house decorated and then didn't pay the damn lady. OK, there's the tea from that. Judgments out here. American Express bill, UPS bills. Stormy ain't paying nobody. OK, no one. OK, <sighs> the hair care items don't appear to be readily available for sale anymore. If you go to her website, it's all out of stock. OK, she got a new product called Body Glaze that's getting mixed reviews, mixed reviews. Y'all can go check my video out about that. Um, and the coup de gras is y'all, she just pulled a second mortgage. On that home, you know, that $2 million home that we talked about earlier in this video for $1.7 million at a 7.5 APR. Y'all, that's huge. That rate is high. That's high as hell. Do y'all know that together right now, she got a three point, she's $3.7 million in debt on that home with that home and that land. First one was $2 million mortgage when she first brought it in 2020. In 2023, her and Courtney took out a $1.7 million second, second mortgage at a 7.5 rate. Okay. That second mortgage payment alone appears to be around fourteen dollars to $15,000 a month. OK, I don't even know what the first mortgage is, uh, payment is because I don't know if she's refired it or what. But if we use this math and I'll, I'll give her even a lower rate, I won't say it's 7.5. Let's say it's right around three or four percent. So that first mortgage is probably right around 10 grand a month. So she's paying about between, I would say. 20 to 25 thousand dollars a month in a mortgage for that land in that house y'all stormy ain't out here in my opinion and allegedly stormy ain't out here making good money moves okay and this is all just an educated guess except for the second mortgage and the first mortgage the documents are there for that okay that's proof in the pudding from the madison county courthouse okay so those are not guesstimations those that's actual receipts but I just, I, I, I mean, this girl is all of this for the optics, all right? To look a certain way, to look like she the richest person on the show, all right? And if you notice in her interview, she said, I'm, I'm the most established, I'm the, I'm the richest, I'm the, I don't know if her mama was putting this in, I don't know if that's, it's like she covets to be the queen of the show, but yet she's not <laughs> okay she rented a space with overhead to pack those damn body glazes and that just seems like another bad decision we all know what happened when black titanic went over to that space we listen i i never miss an opportunity to show y'all how she behaved when a blogger came looking to see where her new warehouse space was and looking to report on it here you go watch this oh, reality tv these weird ass youtube bitches be trying to come to people fucking establishment being weird recording this shit like ain't nobody got time for that dumb ass shit her name the fucking black titanic bitch that shit is weird you get shot the fuck up doing dumb shit like that Get your ass in your car, bitch! Boy, beat your motherfucking ass! Hold on, ever play with me, bitch! <laughs> like, that shit crazy! Like, that shit ain't 
ain't even normal. This shit is fucking weird. That's some stalker shit. Like, why would they do that? I am gonna go on top of memory. You know that shit weird as fuck. Know, I'm glad like, motherfuckers at work, and then you got motherfuckers coming, cause they don't see you on TV trying to come in your shit, recording this shit, being weird. Ain't nobody got time for that shit. Yeah, her own last. Now the bitch ain't got no teeth. Man, that shit just made me so fucking mad. I swear to God, y'all get ridiculous. Man, fuck a TV show. For real. For real. Like, the bitch is over there, literally. Why well, lock this door? You locked the door? Yeah. And she's still in the fucking parking lot. Okay. Okay. Like, why, why do that? Down there. Like, why do that? You have to let people be idiots. She's too old for that. She is. She is. But don't, don't bring yourself down to her. I can't do it because I'm living with her tired and fucking shit. These bitches talk about me all like every fucking day. I know. And then you want to show up to my shit. All they fucking do is talk about me. Yeah, all they fucking do. They try to make something wrong with everything I do. That's just <laughs> They're not out here doing it. <laughs> you cannot allow oh. them to... Period. <sighs> Is she gone? All right. Gotta do it. Are you and male still associates? I would say we're definitely associates. We associate. That's all right. Gotta do it. Are you and male still associates? I would say we're definitely associates. We associate. That's all right. So, y'all, that's where she messed up with the fan base. So, now you got this girl that came on this show. She done messed up in two areas. Okay? It's like... The first area that she messed up in was being two-faced. And going against the person that vouched for her to be on the show. The person that had her back. And the person who I ain't trying to be funny... Has the most and the best business sense. It, it, Destiny made the same dumbass mistake. De for whatever reason. I don't know what these dumb hoes was thinking. But they actually thought by siding with the snots and dumbass Martel. That it was a good move for them. When it ended up being the worst move that they could have ever made. If they would have had this girl's back. While she was going through all this stuff. All of them would be riding high okay doing the damn thing but their jealousy and their envy wouldn't allow them to 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 ride with the queen so again she messed up with the fan base this is stormy and it really appears that stormy and her mammy like she put stormy in a silent but very noticeable competition with the male who for all intents and purposes is the queen of the show. Okay. She had the largest fan base with the strongest financial backing. So why? Why in the hell would she choose to side with Dusty and the Snots and Martel? Why? <laughs> First of all, Dusty attempted to throw a chair at her head. She had a total of five fans. And that includes Peggy the Pigeon, okay? The same thing for the Snots. They had no fan base. And their businesses were all flopping with this Love and Marriage Huntsville platform. But the nail in the coffin to me for Stormy when it comes to the fans really saying girl bye was when she chose to make 
broke ass Martell, her ally. When she showed up and she went to went to Sheree's New Year's Eve party, that was it. That was all she wrote. It was a wrap. It was done. Whatever the fans was questioning, whatever people was saying, well, maybe I might give her a chance, maybe not, maybe, maybe that was it. It was done. Put the nail in the coffin. It's done. Okay? Period. So you aligned yourself with haters. Period. They y'all all went against Mel all at the same time. And to me, it was like that was her her downfall. Um you know, that's part of to me Stormy's downfall. The other things that makes her downfall really sad is is that she ruined her multi-million dollar business chasing clout trying to look like she had more than what she had trying to keep up with the joneses she ruined it she put all this she put herself in all this debt moving from a nice house to this mansion that she couldn't afford she couldn't even furnish okay she furnished it and never paid the people. So again, she couldn't afford it. <laughs> and then she ran her multi-million dollar business in the ground by making several horrible decisions. Meanwhile, the whole time she in this weird competition with a lady that ain't paying her no fucking mind. And then her mama is encouraging the competition. By actually pitting her daughter against Queen B from the gate. By doing what? Hating on her online. And making it publicly known that she don't like her. And so everybody's like, well, we know Stormy never liked her then. Because y'all probably sat around and talked about her. So we really don't like your daughter now. And then to add insult to injury. You get people buying your products. And then they never get it. Child, please. They they don't like your ass at all now. You you haven't given them a reason to like you. And then she goes on. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Then she then she starts this copying shit, this weird ass copying shit. She copied off Mel's baby Caroline and then posted shady shit online. You know, social media is throwing shades at the sugar mama line. None of them ever, ever reposted anything that Mel has put out. And if they have, let me know. I'll wait. I've never seen them repost anything from 7th Avenue. And this is the entire cast, including Stormy. None. They are so jealous of this woman, y'all. They've never reposted her Sugar Mama line, her 7th Avenue, her nothing. Not one person on the cast. Again, including Stormy. It's sad. It's sad when you really put this stuff in perspective. Now she want to copy off Mel doing the skincare. She doing body glaze, right? Okay. I thought you was a hair care specialist, girl. Why would you switch to y'all? I ain't going to go deep into it because I did a whole video about that. Because I think that was a stupid move. And all this did was just add to the disdain that the Melometers had for her. She put herself in an unnecessary competition with Mel. It was a dumb move. And now, you know, she's trying to revamp her image. But no one is going to forget how hateful her mom has been to Mel. And how it was so easy for Stormy to think she was choosing the side of the right people and go with the snots and just leave Mel hanging on an island by herself again. But to whom much is given, much is expected. Mel has is covered and it's lonely at the top. And she's learned that, okay, dealing with these peasants on the show. They so, they so jealous of her. Like everyone can see it. 
you know, she's copying off mail, trying to quote, be a peacemaker, like Stormy, do your own thing. Like, why are you in this silent competition with Mel? Everyone can see it. Even if you deny it, we can see it. Now she's like, let me be a peacemaker between Kiki and Tiffany. Da, 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 da. Mel had already did that the first couple episodes of the show. She already did the peacemaker thing. You unraveled that. You unraveled that. So I guess now, you know, she got to show that she can play that role too. Because Mel did it. Now she can do it. Like, that's what I mean by weird. That's what I mean by weird. So, you know, when it's all said and done, you guys. That to me is a detailed explanation of Stormy's like rise and fall from fame. Okay. <laughs> On Love and Marriage Huntsville. I think she shot her own self in the foot several times. I think her mother didn't didn't help. She actually helped her aim the pow pow. Okay. Like she really did her daughter in by being disgusting to this young lady um, and saying the things that she said about her on social media. And then just sitting back and watching how Stormy moves and the things that she says online. Um it just shows that she's super, super envious of this young lady and she hate her because she ain't her. She hate her because she ain't her. And anybody with eyes can see it, you know. So did the thirst for fame ruin Stormy? Yes. In my opinion, it did. Her clout chasing made her make horrible decisions. Okay, it it made her become a, a hateful, envious person. And I just I don't think she thought this thing through. I know she didn't because she had tunnel vision for becoming a star and becoming a cast member and her business suffered. Her reputation suffered. And actually, it wasn't no coming back from that. It was no coming back. Now, can she do better? Can she come back from it now? I don't know, y'all. Because the Melometers is, they a, they a stern bunch. And once they've made their mind up about you, and they feel that you, you are this type of way, it's kind of hard to get them to change their mind. She might be able to win him over, but I feel like she would really have to do a lot. And it and she would have to start by getting out of this weird competition she's in. Silent competition that she's in with Mel. I mean, everyone, we don't like that. And then she got to stop lying. She's been caught in several lies. Like they debunk her lies all the time. And... You can't really trust a liar. Scratch a lie, find a thief. <laughs> Meanwhile, while the haters are hating, while the while the haters are struggling, while they continue to try to throw salt on her name, she over here living with clean hands and a pure heart and so much protection over her. And for real, for real, all I can see is what joy. <laughs> this lady is really living her best life. She got rid of the demons. Okay. The bad energy, the negativity. She went ahead and decided to put all of her faith and trust in God. And he covered her. So as much as they try to throw stuff on her. As much as they try to hurt her, as much as they try to comfort her, as much as they try to do all the stuff that they're doing, all you seeing right, right here in front of you is what? Joy. Because homegirl is vibrating on a level that they can't even dream about being on. So sad that Stormy decided to vibrate low with the peasants. This is what vibrating high looks like. So, y'all, what do you think? All right. What is y'all opinion? Do y'all think Stormy's thirst for fame 
really kind of ruined what could have been a really beautiful um, journey for her on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Do y'all think that she was always jealous of Mel? Because her mom is given that she always had an issue with her before she tried to befriend her. And what do y'all think about that relationship with Slaw? Were they friends? Did she pay her off allegedly? And in my opinion, y'all hop down in the comments. Tell me what you think. <clears throat> Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Bye.